In today's tutorial, we're going to explore some creative blur effects in Photoshop. If you're someone who loves adding an artistic touch to your photos, this video is for you. This is the joy of editing. I'm your host, Dave Kelly. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I love adding creative blur effects to my flower images, and it's also good for other types of images as well. And you can do it very easily with the great tools that we have in Photoshop. I'll show you three different examples just so you can get the hang of how this all works. I'll be using two different blurring type filters in Photoshop. And basically what I want to do today is emulate some of the effects that we could get using Lens Baby Lenses. Now this is my website. And I have a Lens Baby Gallery here. And you can see all these different images here were all shot with Lens Baby lenses. And they give you this really nice sweet spot of focus, which is really cool. These images were shot with the Lens Baby Composer with the Sweet 50 lens. As you can see, you can adjust the lens to get a really nice sweet spot of focus. And then you get this really nice creative blur which really can add some artistic flair to your image but today in photoshop i'm going to show you how we can get some very similar results using photoshop blur filters that will be found in the blur gallery we're going to start out with this flower image now i've duplicated the background layer because i never like to work on the actual background layer itself but all we need to do is come up to filter click on filter and you want to come to blur gallery and we're going to start out with a iris blur. This is very simple and easy to do. If we look over here at the top right of the interface, we can see iris blur is checked on. Now there's four filters in here. There's filled blur. We'll be looking at that next. There's also a tilt shift, path blur, and spin blur. But we'll start out with iris blur. Now you notice here it says blur. The amount is at 15 pixels. And you can see around the edge the blur. Now if I adjust this to the right, I can really blur that out. Now this is pretty graphic card intensive, so I highly recommend that you make your image a little bit smaller so it'll render a lot quicker. So that's a tip for you. Also take note of my cursor. It looks like a little thumbtack with a plus on it. So basically what that means is you could go ahead and click and you could add more of these, okay? You can see I added one here, one here, and one here. I'm only going to use one for this image, okay? Now, to get rid of these, click on the center dot of the circle, and then just type your delete key. And when you do that, you get rid of it. And then I'll make this one active, type delete, make this one active, type delete. Now, all the circles are gone. So let me add one right to the center of this flower right here. I'm just going to click. And now you'll notice a circle. Now you'll notice you have four circles inside it, and then you have four circles outside of it, and this ring around here. This basically is from this circle up to this little circle. This is your transitional point where your blur transitions, okay? You can then click and drag these circles. If I click and drag and pull it up, it makes the transition point more narrow. If I pull it in, the transition zone becomes wider. Now, notice this square right here. If I drag this out, it becomes a square shape. If I pull it in, it becomes a circle shape. If you drag right here, you can make your circle larger or smaller, whatever you want. And then you have these little circles here. And you notice the little curved arrows there. I can pull out on here and then I can adjust the angle that I would like. So we can make it circular, square shaped or oval shaped like you're seeing now. But I want it to be more circular. So I'm going to pull this in. And then notice up here in the menu bar, you could save this out as a mask to be used in other blurring tools in Photoshop. You can check on high quality. If you check that on, it's going to take a lot longer to render. I recommend that you keep that off unless you have a really fast computer. And you could do a before and after by clicking on the preview. Look at the blur there. If I uncheck this, then you can see it without the blur. And then if I check it back on again, you could see it with the blur. And then you have this button right here. If I have a bunch of these circles down here, and I want to get rid of them all at once. You can click on the center of any circle and type delete. Or you could just click right here and it removes all of the circles. And then you can start from scratch. So that's kind of nice. After you're happy with everything, you click OK. And that sends you back into Photoshop. But let's go ahead and blur this image. Again, I'm going to put one circle right here in the center. And I'm going to give it a decent amount of blur. 
maybe something like that. I don't want to go overboard, but I want enough blur. I'm trying to create a lens baby sweet spot effect right here in the center. Now I can even take these circles right here and pull in like that and really just hone in on the center part of this to give me that really nice artistic type look. I just want my viewer to go right to the center of this flower here. Now here's a little tip for you. If you hold your option or alt key down, you can adjust these guys independently of each other. So I can make this one come out a little bit more, maybe pull this one out a little bit, pull this one out and maybe pull this one in. So you have different adjustments that you could do there. So we could take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. Takes it a second to render. Okay, there it is. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now there's something else that's very important that you need to take into consideration here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into this image here so you can really see what I'm talking about. And you notice it takes a little bit of time for that to render out. Whenever you blur anything, there is absolutely no noise in the image, and that can look very unnatural. But we have a section down below the blur tools. There's different effects in here. You can do different bokeh effects in here. I'm not going to get into that today. Uh, there's motion effects, and motion effects do not deal with this filter, so nothing shows up here. But this is the one I want to show you, and this is very important. And don't forget about this. Click on noise. What you want to do is notice the area of the image that is not blurred. In fact, what I want to do is hold my option roll key down and just drag this one out. But again, this is your transitional zone between here and here, as you can see. But I'm only letting the center of the image get sharp. Everything else gets blurred. But I want you to notice the grain in here. There's a tiny amount of grain in here. You have this grain drop down here. You have three different types of grain you can use. You can use a basic grain, which is the one I like to use. You can use uniform or Gaussian. But I find grain works about the best. It emulates like a grain from a film. So basically what I want to do is just take this amount over to probably around like 6.7%. And that adds just a little bit of grain in there. Maybe just a little bit more, actually. I'm going to take it up to maybe 9. And I don't know if you can see that, but you can see that little bit of grain in there. And that just really makes it look natural. So that's very important. And now all we need to do is click OK. And that'll send us right back into Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and fit this to screen so you can see it. So here is the before. And here is the after. But now we have that nice lens baby sweet spot effect right in the center of the image, which looks really cool. And now let's move on to another image. This is a stock image from Adobe Stock, a free stock image. So we're going to go ahead and get a little bit more creative with this one. I went ahead and duplicated the background layer. We'll come back up to filter, come to blur gallery. But this time we're going to use field blur. So we'll click on field blur. And you'll notice we have this circle right here in the center, and we still have this thumbtack with a plus on it. But you notice, you see this white line going around here? This is the amount of blur, which corresponds to this blur amount right here. And watch this as I start to pull on this. So I can pull on this, and you can see that line get longer, or I could click and drag here. But basically, what I like to do is start out like this. Take this, and you can drag this, and I'm going to put it maybe somewhere right in this area here. And we can move these around. But what I want to do is take this down to zero pixels. And now that's in focus. Now the whole image is in focus right now, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click and add another one of these blur areas in here. And let's go ahead and drag this up and really blur this out. Let me go ahead and make this smaller again so it renders a little bit quicker for us. Okay, but you notice I have that blur spot there. So now I can add another one. And you can even add them outside of the canvas. So I'm going to add this one outside of the canvas up here. And let's really drag this like this. You see that? So we can get that nice dreamy blur back in here. And we could have different amounts of blur in different areas. I'm going to come right in here and let's blur this out. And something like that. Now... I'm going to take this one and drag it down. I want the top of her head to be slightly blurred. You see that? See how I'm adding a little bit of blur by just dragging that down? Okay, so now let's add some more blur over here. And I need more blur than that. Let's get a little creative here. Add a little bit more blur. But doesn't that look really cool? Now I can add another one like right here. And maybe add a little bit more blur into here. 
Okay, something like that. And then we can move these around to see if we can find a nice little spot where that really works out nicely. And I think something like that looks really cool. Now I could add another one here if I wanted to, but I think it looks good. So here is the before. And I'll click the preview again, check it back on. Here's the after. Now again, you want to really zoom into the image. And we want to take a look at the grain pattern in here. The grain is obliterated. It's not there. On this one, I think I'm going to come up to about, I don't know, about 7%. Just add a little bit of grain. That might be too much. I'm going to back that off a little bit. I'm going to come down to about like 6.2. Just to add a little grain to match the in-focus grain. Now, I can see our face is not quite sharp enough. So let me click on this circle and drag this up and see if I can bring that face a little bit more into focus. Maybe right there. It's blurred on her eye a little bit in here, but I think I'll take care of that in Photoshop. I'll use a layer mask and bring some of that focus back. I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK. Now, I'll go ahead and add a layer mask, so click this button right here. That adds a white layer mask on there. Right now, I have a white brush. I'm gonna type my X key. That'll swap those colors around. Now, I have black. And now, with a nice soft edge brush at 0% hardness and about that size right there, I like the little bit of blur that's happening on her hair up here. What I'm going to do is take my opacity down to about 30%, and I'm going to click right here one time. I'll move the brush slightly to the right, click it one more time, and move it up and click it one more time. That just adds that little bit of focus back in there. If I option or I'll click on this mask, you can see that's that little bit of black paint on there that's bringing that focus back in there. So option or I'll click it again, and you can see, and that looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and fit this to screen. I'll make it a little bit smaller. And let's take a look. Here is the before. A cool image, but I think you'll agree after adding that little bit of creative blur in there, it just really turns it into a more artsy looking piece. Coming very close to what a lens baby lens shot would look like. Now let's try it out on this stock image of some autumn leaves. I want to give you different examples just to show you how this works. Again, I duplicated the background layer. We're going to come back up to filter, blur gallery. I'm going to do fill blur again. I'll do this quicker. So right now, I'm going to move this to the area I want to be in focus. So basically, I'm going to pull this the whole way till it goes to zero. And that's my focal point. Now, the other thing I want to point out is these, when you click and add a new blur area, they kind of interact with each other. So I'm going to take this and let's really ramp up the blur over here. Get it really looking very dramatic okay doesn't that look cool right there and let's come over here i'm going to go outside of the canvas and let's add some blur up in here okay kind of cool and let me go over here outside the canvas and we'll add some blur up in this area right here and then maybe down below the canvas here and let's add some blur in here so just like that and maybe i'll put one more like right about here and see how this interacts between this and this one. But now let's add some blur and just adjust it till it looks pretty good. And then I could take this and move it over and see if I can blur that other area out. See how I can come over into here. And you could see they're kind of pushing and pulling against each other. And let me just move this one up a little bit like this. Maybe a little more this way. Just to blur that a little bit more. And maybe I'll pull this one up as well. Let's pull this one up into here. And I think that looks really cool. So I want you to focus in on this leaf right here. And I like that little extra blur here. It looks really artistic, I think. So I like that. And don't forget to add some noise in here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come up and add about oh, like 6.78% of a little bit of noise in there using the grain. And then we'll just click OK. And now we're back in Photoshop. So let's take a look. Here's the before. An OK image, right? But after, I don't know, there's a lot more drama. It looks a lot more artistic. And here's one thing I'll say about using these blurring techniques. If you have a bunch of throwaway type images, you may want to try throwing some blur on them. Sometimes you could take an image that's not really that great and add some blur to it and turn it into a nice looking piece of art. Well, there it is. Hey, go back through some of your old images. You may find some images that you can add some blur to and salvage those images and turn them into some art. Hey, if you enjoyed the uh, tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. 
And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.